That's fair. 6%. And America, I want you to give me just a couple of minutes here. And I want you to ponder what I'm saying to you. And I want you to hear me clearly. As a family, state, and nation grieves for one of its brightest, bravest heroes, there is one among us with another agenda in mind. Over this last weekend here in Texas, Navy SEAL sniper Chris Kyle a man who selflessly served four tours in combat. He saved countless American lives. A man who received not one, but two silver stars. Five bronze stars with valor. A husband. A father. A son. An unquestioned patriot. A man who didn't talk about Jesus, but lived his Christian belief, was senselessly murdered by a fellow veteran he was just trying to help. He's not a doctor. He didn't pretend to be a doctor. He was helping a friend. That's it. But yesterday, in something I couldn't believe happened, yesterday, former Congressman Ron Paul took to that brave platform we all call Twitter and tweeted this, quote, Chris Kyle's death seems to confirm that he who lives by the sword dies by the sword. Treating PTSD at a firing range doesn't make sense, end quote. Well, Dr. Paul, he wasn't treating it. I'm sorry that you listened to the media. I Thought you knew better than that. After all, aren't you a guy who just loves to blame the media on cover-ups on things like Tower Number 7? Suddenly, you rush to believe the media that he was somehow or another, had his stethoscope out and was treating someone. Dr. Paul, as I have said many times, we share many ideas about freedom and the Constitution. And I know you fought hard for the Constitution over the years. But as I have also said many times, we disagree on a good number of issues. But even those who disagree can respect each other. And I've always had healthy respect for what you tried to accomplish for the cause of liberty. I understand so unbelievably clearly that you don't like the foreign wars our nation has been involved in. I understand that you've been fighting against them from day number one. And I also understand that some of us haven't. But some of us are at a different level of understanding. We're not all Dr. Paul now. But Chris Kyle and those like him are not the policymakers, doctor. As Americans, we don't go over to the graves of even the German soldiers from World War II and dance on them. Because it's what sets us apart. A fundamental respect for life. Would you, tre- would you tweet something similar about somebody who smokes? Well, died of cancer, huh? He who lives by the cigarette dies by the cigarette. Would you tweet the same thing about those involved in auto accidents? How about pilots? And those in the muted media. Is this how you would react if some doctor would make some kind of statement about Rock Hudson or Freddie Mercury? Somehow or another, I think not. Chris Kyle gave all that he had as a volunteer for his country in a nation that doesn't require mandatory service on anything, doesn't even even require responsibility anymore. We rely on those few who are truly special. Those few who are driven to put their lives where their beliefs are. And Chris Kyle did so repeatedly. Dr. Paul, so many Americans admire you because you were willing to put yourself out there in Washington for a cause in which you believed. Chris Kyle was no different. He was willing to put himself out there for a cause in which he believed. Except he did it with other people actually shooting at him. 
on the battlefields of Iraq and Afghanistan. Quite honestly, what Ron Paul wrote yesterday sounds more like the ramblings of Code Pink, the new Black Panthers, or the Westboro Baptist Church. I can't decide which one you've gained a membership in, maybe all of them. It's more of more the statements of a member of one of those organizations than an elder statesman newly retired from office in the service of the United States of America. It's beneath you, Dr. Paul. You know what one of our problems is as a country? We're no longer decent to one another. And I know there are many that will say, oh, this, we're talking about the pot calling the kettle black. I know. I know. But see, that's the point of being human. Recognizing your mistakes and then trying to be better the next day. When you assess a problem, when you say, you know what, we shouldn't be in these, all these foreign wars, you admit your mistake and you move forward. You know, we shouldn't have the Patriot Act because they didn't mean the sunset. Oh, then what are you going to do? Honesty and decency is required. What I want to say is not always what should be said. Example, right now to Dr. Ron Paul. Why shouldn't it be said? Because we should be civil to one another. And we've all said things that we shouldn't have said. And maybe that's the way Ron Paul feels about this tweet last night. Maybe he regrets this serious, serious error in judgment. I hope so. I hope that his isolationist views when it comes to the U.S. military haven't so blinded him to the reality that he can't so, so much as even take a pause in life and reflect on the sacrifice and the courage and the honor of the men and the women who put their lives on the line every day Every single day because Congress and the president demand it. Because liberty demands it. Even if you disagree. Ron Paul and to his supporters. I deal in the free speech. I deal in the First Amendment every single day. And I know, unlike most, that the freedom of speech, that amendment, the only real speech requires protection is the speech like this that others might find ugly and offensive. I find Ron Paul's speech ugly and offensive, but I defend his right to say it. And I would not violate nor ask anyone else to violate it by having him silenced. More speech, not less speech, but it requires all of us in responsible ways to respond because that is the right that so many like chris kyle fought for i'm becoming more and more libertarian every day i love these people who just pretend they were born libertarians no i've always known. well i'm sorry i'm imperfect i guess i'm an imperfect species but i'm learning something new every day and I learned, I learned a few years ago, I think it was about six years ago, I started calling for the troops to return home. Again today, I called for an end to the war. Like Ron Paul, I've been calling for this war to be over and our troops to be pulled out of not just the Middle East, but also Europe. What are we doing in Asia anymore? And I know that's just not good enough for some libertarians, and that's fine. Because if kicking a man who's now dead, or kicking a family when they're down makes one a libertarian. Well, then let me tell you something. You so-called guardians of liberty have grossly misread what is required for man to rule himself and for man to be able to create a civil society. We must first be civil to each other. For those in this audience who have wondered over and over again why I haven't, and why I could never support Ron Paul. This should finally answer your question.